So this piece of stock right here is a piece of 303 stainless steel. It's two inches in diameter and three inches long. And we're gonna to try to make a shift knob out of this piece of stock. It's gonna be more of like a low profile shift knob. It's literally just as simple as that right there. And that's what it looks like. Nothing too hardcore except the fact that it's a really hard material. And this is the bottom that gets pocketed out. And this may look pretty thick around here, but that's kind of the point. People really like a heavier shift knob, so that's sort of what this is going after. Now, I'm gonna make one of these for myself, and this first one being mine, obviously, because I wanna sort of test out the processes and everything, and I really just wanna get a feel for how this material machines, because I've never machined anything harder than 1018 steel. So let's just dive right on in and I'm going to go pretty conservative with the cuts on this. At least I think it's pretty conservative. So we'll start there and then we'll continue. taking a very light depth of cut and I assume that's why that is squealing so bad and chattering leaving this awesome little pattern here of chatter. I am pretty much out of luck on this one. I'm going to go ahead and finish this one out and run it on the parting tool and just get it out of there. I figured out what's wrong. So when this goes up here to cut this little angled profile up in this area it starts cutting on the side of this insert cutting on this side of the insert rather, rather than the tip of the insert and that's what's causing all that vibration and chatter and that is no good so that is kind of upsetting for this one that's how it goes I actually ordered a tool for this where it's more of a uh, profiling tool and I ordered an insert that's actually for steel and stainless steel so that is going to be helpful whenever I get that so I was just kidding. Actually, I went ahead and waited for the new tool to come in. I figured since I'm already a few videos ahead, I might as well just wait for the new tool to come in to finish this one that's kind of messed up. So that's where we're going to start off now. So I'm just going to do a final profile on the outside of the part here with this DCMT tool. Now this is the DCMT tool. The D meaning diamond shaped at 55 degree. This is 55 degree angle here. C specifies this angle here. You can see this clearance angle that sort of goes that way. M specifies the tolerance for whatever the tolerance is. I'm not really sure. And the last one, T, specifies the chip breaker. So what kind of angle we got going on here. There's little ridges. You can't really see them because I'm using a GoPro. But I should have my new camera here soon. There's little ridges. I'll call them ridges on the insert here and they, they act as a chip breaker so they just break the chip off so you don't have a bird's nest flopping around. So here it is. Doesn't that look really nice right there just like it is until you get down here and it looks a little bit more rough and then you get here and then it just looks bad. So I couldn't part this off with this tool. Couldn't do it. I don't know what it was. Uh, I don't. I don't know. Once again, this one's going to be mine. Uh, it's all the lines didn't line back up and everything like that from the previous time, which is okay. Once again, I was pretty much just testing this tool here, and it really ended up looking all right. I mean, this top part looks awesome. I couldn't ask for a better finish. It turned out good for my first time. But we're going to do another one. I'm not going to show that one. Well, I'll show the finished part, but I'm not going to show the process of it. And hopefully it ends up a lot better than this. Hey, hey. 
So right away you can tell some drastic differences between the two, one being in the design side. So this angle right here is a lot sharper on this, on this one right here. And I found that's what caused some chatter because the tool couldn't get back in here that far enough and it started chattering a little bit. So I ultimately made that angle a little bit shallower on this one right here. I mean it still looks really good and I, it really turned out good. I mean it's one continuous flow where this one's all bunched up, but that's okay. And we'll end up facing this off, manual, some, manual a tool around and face this off real nice same with this one and then profile everything out to make this pocket so I finally got a better camera and I know this camera doesn't have an external mic input but I really want to test out the sound on this. I don't know if the sound is even going to be that good on this, but it sure does make a much better picture, and I hope it is much more enjoyable to watch these videos now. And now I can actually finally zoom in to cool stuff like this. But we're still going to use the GoPro with this, and that's mainly more in the machine stuff. But if I want to do like close-up stuff, then I will be sure to show the cool stuff with the cool camera because I'm excited for this to get into the details now and you can see almost everything and I was waiting on this camera forever. First off I got the camera from Amazon and then I got it, it turned on for a second and then it wouldn't continue turning on like it got to like the Canon logo screen and then it stopped turning on. But anyway Canon fixed it and they sent me a new one so that's awesome. It took a second but that's okay we finally have it now and that's all that matters. So let's just machine this thing. So I got everything faced off and getting ready to start the program with this quarter inch flat end mill. There we go. Getting ready to pocket this out. And I have it on the low setting so far. I'm only going to be running about 2500 RPM and making very light cuts. That is it right there. You can see the texture on this thing now, how it got all chattery when I was uh, mill turning except this top part that's really nice. So this one is mine right here. The one I'm going to go ahead and put on my car right now because it's so awesome. I am excited that I got the pocketing to work and now I know like the feeds and speeds of stainless steel. Well, sort of. So that first one was just to prove things out and now I'm going to do go ahead and put this one in there and manual the half inch end mill around like I did before, clean this off and then mill everything out. Now that thing looks awesome. And most of you don't know that this will be my last project in this garage and that is somewhat awesome for me because I sort of negotiated a full two car garage where we're moving next. So next week's video is basically just going to be me moving this machine and then setting it back up. That may not interest some of you, but moving a 1200 pound machine isn't the easiest thing in the world, so it could be interesting. So now that we're all finished, thank you for watching.